Welcome to the Hellfire Club Archaeological Project. In this short video, we'll take a look at some of the methods and techniques that we use to help to understand the monument that lies at the back of the Hellfire Club on top of Montpellier Hill in County Dublin. Although the excavation in October 2016 only took four weeks, the project itself has been carried out over a number of years. It began as a research project and involved geophysics, LIDAR, and a number of other techniques to help to understand this monument. When it came to the excavation in 2016, we carried it out under licence by the National Museum of Ireland and the National Monuments Service. We chose to excavate two trenches, Trench 1, running north to south, and Trench 2, east to west and close to the Hellfire Club. Each one of the trenches had its own distinct purpose. Trench 1 was excavated in an attempt to understand what the large mound is made of. Trench 2 was to see if any archaeological material survived at all, closest to the Hellfire Club where it appeared to be most damaged. We began the excavation by surveying in the trenches. We then removed the very uppermost sods using spades and we carefully kept the sods to one side so we could return the ground to the original condition following the excavation. We then removed the upper topsoil layers, which contained a lot of modern rubbish like cans and crisp bags, all of that kind of stuff, using mattocks and shovels. It's quite a, a physical job, in a sense, but it also allows you to get a good sense of the different contexts as you're excavating. As we reached more archaeological levels, we began to use travels more to excavate, and that allowed us to carefully examine the soil as we were moving it to see if there were any artefacts and also to take samples. Now when we took samples of the soil or as we found any artefacts we plotted their positions using a total station and GPS. We also took thousands of photographs during the excavation to document the work. For every single different type of soil that we found or every kind of feature we documented them with written records and contact sheets and we also drew everything to scale as well with plans and drawings of the section to show how the different layers overlapped each other and interact. As well as thoroughly documenting the excavation, a big part of this dig was the public engagement aspect. We deliberately chose not to put any fencing or anything like that around the excavation as it was being carried out. That way members of the public were more invited to come over to have a chat with us, to ask us what we were doing, to ask us questions about the site's history, but also about the practice of archaeology. With the Heritage Officer of South Dublin County Council, Rosalind Dwyer, we also made contact with a number of local schools. We provided tours, we gave them experience on the site as well, so they can get a bit of uh, an insight into the work of an archaeologist. After the dig was completed, we moved into post-excavation analysis. That not only involved collating all of the results together and writing a report, but also input and insights from a number of specialists who looked at different aspects of what we had discovered, including the artefacts, the bones, and also radiocarbon data, some of the charcoal samples as well, which gives us a little bit of an insight into how old this tomb may well be. You can find more information on this excavation, including its methods and the results, in a free publication available from our website at abartaheritage.ie.